In this tutorial series, we will be learning shell programming or shell scripting in Linux or Born Shell. So let's begin. First of all, let's see what is a shell. So shell is a command language interpreter. Now you all know that the language of computer is zeros and ones. And obviously it is very difficult for us to talk to the computer in that language, right? So you can think of shell as a special program in the operating system which accepts your commands or instructions or code, which are mostly in English language or similar to English language. And if those commands or code is valid, then it is passed to the kernel. So you can say that shell acts as a translator, which translates your commands and code into the language of computer. Or in other words, it is an interpreter. So it executes commands that it reads from the keyboard or from a file. So if we put all those commands in a file or the code in a file, and then we give that file to the shell to execute, we call it as shell scripting. Also, shell is not a part of a kernel, but it uses the kernel to execute programs and perform other functions. Okay, what is a shell script? So a shell script is nothing more than a series or group of commands written in a text file. So you write that in a text file and then you give that text file to the shell to execute. And the extension of that text file in which we perform shell scripting or write shell commands is dot ASH, right? So a file with this extension is a uh, shell scripting file. Also, one very important thing is shell scripts are interpreted, not compiled. So there is a difference between uh, interpreting and compiling. So let's say this is some file and the languages which are interpreted are read line by line or you can say executed line by line. So let's say if this is my file and this is some piece of code which is written in this file and I am interpreting this file. Maybe this is some, some language which is interpreted, not compiled. So when it will be interpreted, it will be read line by line and um, the output will be given line by line. So let's say there is some error on this point in this line. So the output of all the lines will be given until it reaches this point. So when the script will, uh, will be at this point, error will be given and it won't be interpreted anymore. The rest of the lines won't be interpreted, their output won't be given. But the output of the previous lines will be given. This is what happens when a script or a code file is interpreted. But on the other hand, when we are uh, compiling some, some program, uh, there is some language which is compiled, not interpreted. So when you compile a program and let's say again, let's say there is an error at this point, the whole script is checked for errors and then compiled. So if there is any error at any point in the program, the script, sorry, the code won't be uh, compiled. This file won't be compiled and the error will be prompted, right? So once this whole code is uh, free of errors, then this file will be compiled and then it will be executed. The output will be given at that point, right? So if there is any error in the file, the file, the output will not be given because the file will, will not be compiled unless it is error. -free. So this is the basic difference between interpreting and compiling. So remember that shell scripts are interpreted, not compiled. Now let's see some common shells. So there are different shells, for example, born shell, C shell, corn shell, Thomas C shell, and so on. And each shell offers different functionalities. And depending upon our need and functionality, we choose the shell for which we want to uh, do the program. The, the programming and the shell scripting for each shell is slightly different. And as I told you in the first minute of this video, that we will be performing uh, or learning the uh, shell scripting for born shell. Now let's see the short forms of these shells. So the short form for born shell is BSH or SH. So uh, born shell is such a common and basic shell that if we just write sh, that means we are referring to barn shell. The short form of c shell is csh, the short form of corn shell is ksh, and the short form of thomas c shell is tcsh. And, and you should remember these short forms, they will come in very handy. 
and we will see the, uh, why is that in a while right now let's say you want to uh, perform the shell scripting in c shell you want to write code for c shell so how will we do it do that so if you want to perform or write the code for any other shell any shell there are two steps to it first of all you have to install that shell and then you have to change to that shell so whenever you run your terminal the default shell which is used to execute your commands is if, for example if you're talking about ubuntu the default shell is bash right this is the default shell so the default shell is not c shell and c shell is not usually not even installed so to install the c shell we have a command sudo apt-get install and then the short form of that shell whichever shell you want to install so in this case we want to install c shell so we have written csh and you must have seen this command in one of the previous videos where we learned how to install any software any application in linux through terminal so this is the same command exact same command except that here instead of the name of the software we have written the name of our shell the short form of our shell so let's say i want to install corn shell right we just saw, saw it here this is the corn shell the short form of corn shell is ksh so if i want to install corn shell i won't write csh here rather i will write ksh because now i want to install the corn shell okay now the next thing is once you have installed that shell you have to change to that shell as well because your default shell is bash so to change to that shell the command is change shell ch sh that means change shell space dash s and then this path so this is the path of the shell that you have installed it is installed in bin right so this is the command and obviously this is the short form of c shell if you want to change to c shell if we are changing to a corn shell we will write ksh obviously right and once you've done that maybe you want to change back to your default shell or any other shell you can do this change shell again right so ch sh is the same command except for csh we have written bash here so bash is actually uh, born again shell so the full form of bash is born again shell so it is actually the advanced form of born shell and if you're a beginner and you want to decide which the shell scripting of which shell you should learn bash or born i have made another video for that in which i have uh, described in very detail what, it, what are the differences between bash and born and which shell programming to choose if you are a beginner and to learn at the beginning right you should watch that okay let's move on so if you want to check which shells are installed in your system this is the command cat and this path this path will tell you which shells are currently installed in your system and if you want to display the current shell you can do this echo dollar shell so if you will, if you will run this command right now the uh, the default shell will be shown and that is bash so it shows the current shell which is uh, which is present at that time which is used at that time now let's start shell scripting the first thing to know when you are learning shell scripting is the shebang line. So if you are a C or C++ programmer, or if you have learned C or C++ in the past, I will give you this example. So let's say this is your C or C++ program. So you must remember that you always used to put a particular line at the start of your program. And that was hash, include, and then uh, some particular library in it, sometimes uh, IOStream or STDIO or whatever. Uh, IOStream for C++ and STDIO for uh, C language. So you always used to do that because you needed some functionality which required this library, right? So you always used to do that. So you can think of shebang line as that line that you always have to add to the top of your shell script. You always have to do that, right? Now, what is a shebang line? So shebang line is actually the path to the born shell or the born interpreter. So with this line, we are actually telling the uh, system that execute my script in this particular shell. So you can see SH here, right? This is uh, saying born shell, right? We, we uh, just learned that the short form uh, for born shell is SH or BSH, right? So SH refers to born shell. So we are telling the system that I want my script, this particular script to be run in the born shell. 
So if I uh, remove this and let's say I write CSH here, right? If I write this, it means I'm telling the system, I'm telling the kernel to run this uh, particular script in the C shell, right? So this is actually specifying which shell do we want this script to run in, right? This is that line. And you will always add it at the top of your script. You can add a comment in shell scripting using this symbol hash. So this is actually a single line comment. So what to do for a multi-line comment? For that, we have two methods. The first one is this. So you write this operator, less than sign, and then uh, your tag, and then you close your tag. The, the, the tag should be same. This is your comment. And this is the start of your tag. This is the end of your tag. Now, this is not a keyword, right? You can uh, use any word here. For example, let's take another example. Uh, we are writing a comment and I am taking the tag as A, B, and C. And then I will write my comment here. And then at the end, I will close my comment with the same tag, which is A, B, C. So you can choose any tag, whatever you want. And whatever you enclose inside will be your comment. And the other method for multi-line comment is this. So you put colon and then single quotation mark and then your comment here. And then you will enclose it with and then another single quotation mark. So your comment will be enclosed. So these are the two methods for multi-line comments. Then we have some special characters in shell scripting. We also call them as wildcards or meta characters. And these characters have some special meanings and they are treated by the shell in a special way. So for example, we have, we have these uh, special characters, which for example, dollar, steric, question mark, and so on. And you all know uh, that what is the special purpose of dollar? So dollar is actually used before variables. We learned that in the previous videos. Dollar is used before uh, variables. So th that is the special purpose and many other. Many others. So you will see the special purpose of steric as well um, in one of the future videos. Now, if we do not want a particular special character to be treated specially by the shell, what to do then? So for that, we add uh, quotation marks. Uh, in, we enclose the that special character in quotation marks. This way, it is treated just like any other. Now let's learn how can we use shell variables. First thing is we do not declare variables in shell programming. We directly use them, or you can say we directly initialize them or assign values to them. We don't declare variables. So if you want to use some variable, directly write the name of that variable, put equals to sign, and store whatever you want to store in that variable. It's that simple and that easy. So let's say if you want to store some string in it, and that string has space in between, so you have to put the quotation marks. If it doesn't have space like this, it will be saved in the variable. It won't be a problem. But if you have a space in the, that string, you should put the, uh, you should enclose that string in quotation marks, right? Otherwise, only the first uh, word will be saved. Okay, one of the very important things and something um, which will cause errors in the future when you will be programming, that is do not put spaces on either side of this equal sign. So if you put space here, it will cause problem in shell programming. Do not do that. Uh, don't forget this thing. This is very important. These are some variable rules and you must be familiar with them already. So a variable name is a combination of alphabets, digits, or underscore. No spaces or commas are allowed within a variable name. The first character of a variable name must be an alphabet or an underscore. So it can't be a number. And variable names should be of reasonable length. Now, this is not a strict rule, but it is a good practice. And obviously, variable names are case sensitive. That means this name and this name, they both are not the same thing. And obviously, this is not the same thing either, not the same variable either. So they are all different variable names. So variable names are always case sensitive. Let's see how can we extract values from a variable. So let's say there is a particular variable x and we have stored maybe 10 in it. How can we extract this value? And I think you already know this from one of the previous videos. And uh, that method is, uh, let's say we want to store the value of x in another variable y. 
So to extract the value from x, we will write dollar x, right? If you want to display it on screen, we will write echo dollar x. And if you don't want to display on screen, but you just want to save this value in another variable, we will write dollar x, uh, y equals to dollar x. So whenever you extract value from a variable, you put dollar sign before it. Now notice one thing. When we are assigning the value, like here, we are when we are assigning the value, we are not putting the dollar sign because we are not extracting the value from that variable. We are actually putting the value inside it, right? But when we are extracting the value, we put the dollar sign. So value is being assigned to y, so there is no dollar sign before y. But value is being extracted from x, so there is a dollar sign before x. When you want to display something on the screen, you use the command echo. To display a string on the screen, this is the way, echo, and then the then your st string. And if you want to display some variable, echo, and then dollar your variable name. Now let's see how to take user input in shell scripting. So that is very simple. You just write read and the name of your variable. You don't have to declare this variable before. So when you write read x, uh, whatever the user will enter will be stored in this variable x. And again, notice that here the value is being assigned to x, uh, taken from user and then assigned to x. So it's not extracted, so we have no dollar sign here. So here we are taking the user input for a single variable. So if you want to take the user input for multiple variables, more than one variables in one single line, you can also do that. And for that, you can just write read. Let's say the variables are x, y, and z. Just separate them with a single space. That is enough. So write your variable names in a single line separated by a single space. So user will enter the values one by one and they will be stored in each of these variables one by one. So let's see an example for that. This is the example. So here you can see read uh, section one, SEC one, space, SEC two, space, SEC three. So three variables. The input for them is entered here and the input must be entered with spaces again, right? You can't enter one input, one value, and then press uh, go to the next line. You can't do that. You have to enter them uh, in one line with space. That is the format. If you do this, uh, or these three values will be stored in these three variables. But I would recommend you not to do this. Take the values of variables individually. That is better. Because normally you uh, write this statement and then you forget that you were taking three values in one single line and then when you are entering the values, you because of the habit of uh, programming in C or C++, you enter the, put the value and then you press enter to enter the next value. And then this thing will give error at that time. So it's better to take values individually, uh, one at a time. Okay, let's see the those five arithmetic operators. So if you have done programming in any other programming language, you must be familiar with them. Plus is used for addition, minus for subtraction, static for uh, multiplication, and slash forward slash for division, and percentage sign for modulus. Let's write code for a simple shell script in which two numbers are being added. So let's say I have a variable x and let's say it's 3. I have another variable y and I will assign it as let's say 5. And then if I want to add these two variables, so, so you must think that to add the command should be $x plus $y right? But it's not that simple because uh, I told you in one of the previous videos and I will tell you again that in shell programming, every variable is treated as a string. So everything is a string. This is not a number. This three is treated as a string or you can say as a character. So it's not a number, not an integer. So you can't add them. If I do this, I will uh, just get the answer will be just 3 plus 5, in, like a string. So this, this is a string, right? I won't get the addition. I won't get the calculation. So for that, we have a special operator, which we use to tell the shell, to tell the terminal that this is uh, a number. Treat this thing as a number and perform addition or subtraction or perform the operation which I'm telling you to do on it. For that, what we do is we will write z equals 2, and then we will 
for this key. This is a grave key and you can find this key uh, on your keyboard uh, above the tab key. So above your tab key, before your uh, numerics key, you will find this key. This is called as grave key. You will put that and then you will write E X P R. This is a keyword. And then after this, you will write dollar X space plus dollar Y. And then you will enclose it again in the grave key. This is how you will write. When you will write this, the shell will treat these variables as numbers and it will perform whatever operation you have asked it here. For example, plus is here, it will add them. And later on, you can uh, display it on the screen using echo dollar z. This is your simple shell script, which is performing addition on two numbers. So remember to put these grave keys uh, before and after your, uh, your command, your line, and put this expr keyword uh, before your addition operation. So when you will do this, you will find the uh, result as uh, when the shell will treat them as a number, not a string. So let's write some code in a shell script and let's see how to create your shell script. First of all, we will make a hello world program and I will teach you how to create and execute your shell script. And then we will write this code in the script and we will run this one as well and see the output. 